<laughs> and what do they say though? Like, 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 I mean, like, 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 are, are they just, I, I'm, I'm just saying, are they just like, wow, like, like, wow, that is your dad. Yeah, usually they don't believe me. So I have to be like, oh yeah, my last name is Banks and you can you know, flip the record and everything. It's got his name on it. So that yeah. is so cool. That's so like cool. I, I never knew that you had, I mean, I, I, I just assume like, you know, the people that you run with, you guys are all into like the newer stuff and you, you like the older stuff, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, cause I know, you know, that your family, you know, I mean, I'm aware of the, like what you're a fan of now. So right. that's just so cool. Like to, to, to be, to be able to have that. Cause I'll be honest. Like I used to see you at shows. I think it was more when you were younger I would see mm -hmm. you and then your brother started coming and I remember thinking like, okay, are they, do they like this or is it just kind of dad saying, this is what we're doing tonight and, and yeah. you're going to do it because you don't have a driver's license yet and you can't not do it. I think that's kind of what it started out as. Um, and then I think, so it was the new, the new age fest was definitely like the first time I was like, this is actually pretty cool. And then my dad took me to this just Vegas. It was the first ever Vegas hardcore show I went to. I, th I think it was Candy that headlined. So it wasn't really a Vegas hardcore show, but it was my first hardcore show in Vegas. Yeah, I want to say Candy was headlining. And that was like my first introduction to like modern hardcore. And I just remember like I was a pretty small kid at the time and just kind of getting slammed a lot. I was like, it kind of made me feel like a bigger guy in a way. And then I think the second show was in like this, like a, like a storage unit that my dad took me to. I believe Curl Up and Die was headlining. And that was when I realized like, this is like, I kind of, I want to be a part of this. What was the first instrument that you picked up? Did you follow dad and go right to guitar? Cause I remember, I, I, I remember, I think drums, was that it? Yeah, it was drums. I still play drums. Uh, I've obviously, I haven't been able to play for a little while since uh, I'm in college right now. But uh, yeah, it was definitely drums. It was actually one of my friends, I think I was in the fifth grade, was like, oh, I'm taking drum lessons. And so I was kind of like, oh, I also want to try that out. And just kind of stuck. So. I remember, I, I just, I remember being stoked when Jeff first told me like, oh, he like jammed a song. I don't even know what song it was, but it was like you and your brother, and like you were on drums, your brother was on bass, and he was on guitar. And I'm like, he finally doesn't have to worry about bandmates or anything. They have a place to practice, and it's it's taken care of. Yeah, yeah no, that was... Yeah, I've kind of just been sticking with drums for a little while. I'm thinking about maybe bringing a guitar out, just because it's a lot easier to have than, obviously, a full kit in the dorm. But um, I'll, I'll see how that goes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Um, do you ever think that you would do a band with with your dad? That's a good question. I'm, or is I'm that interested in it? But or sorry, what were you gonna? Oh no, no, no! I was just gonna say, or is that because you gotta realize I look at your dad obviously different than you look at your dad, right? Or is is, is or is that just something like okay, it's a cool idea, but that's my dad. Like, 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 what are your yeah. thoughts? I think. Um, I really, I would, it'd be really cool to like record something with him. I know he's offered to do it before, but I was just kind of like, uh, I don't know if I was like busy or something, but I, I think maybe playing live, that would kind of be like the line I draw, but, um, I would definitely be like open to recording. That would be awesome. Gotcha. You know, totally, mm -hmm. totally. Like I would, I, I really wonder because like, it's really interesting to me that you guys have really gone above and beyond like with this hardcore thing like dude i see some of winston's stories when you guys were in like you guys were in europe recently dude he's just yeah. he's like a sophomore going into junior or he may be a senior now but mm -hmm. i'm just saying he's like in the pit with like these grown men i'm like oh my gosh like yeah. it's and, and but but i'm saying your, your guys interest levels have like it wasn't like you guys did a band and then you stopped and you moved on and did something else mm -hmm. like you guys have stayed with this I, I just think that's so cool yeah I was, I was actually i was talking to a friend about this there's not a lot of things i'll like pick up and i'll be like oh this is cool and then like i'll stick with it but like hardcore i'm going on like, four years right now being like a strict hardcore fan well so, you've always and your brother like you guys sort of strike me as you guys can do a lot 
like, if you guys want to, you guys could play different kinds of music, but you guys <laughs> want to play this kind of music. And so that's, yeah. you know. I think another thing with that is just kind of, like, the community that's around it. Like, Definitely. I'm sure if I was playing, like, uh, pop music, like, people listen to it, but it's, I don't think it's the kind of people that I would, like, be like, oh, that guy listens to my music. But like, I think hardcore, it's always... Like, I feel like I have community behind me when I do it. It's sort of like that cool feeling when you're in just, like, a random store and you see a guy who has maybe, like, a Dag Nasty shirt or maybe, right. a, like, you know that guy's a little more down than if, than if he's wearing a Green Day shirt kind of right. kind of thing. No, that's, that's exactly right, yeah. Nothing, nothing against Green Day, of course. You know, fine musicians, fine. I mean, they've certainly don't. They're not going to care what I say one way or the other. But that's, uh, that's you know, that is, that is really, really cool. Um, I remember. It's funny that you bring that up about when you first went in the pit. I remember when you were younger, and you were playing basketball, and your dad put you in a league with like kids that were way bigger than you. And I remember seeing you in there and I just remember thinking like, wow, that's so smart because he is going to play to that level because that's what he's going to know. And it's, and right. it's almost like at a young age going in the pit, like you kind of realize, okay, this is what I'm getting myself into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I guess, yeah, that's kind of stuck with me for a while. Like even, what was it? Today, Sunday. So like last night I saw um, Zulu play with off um here in denver and just like seeing people i'm, a, I'm like 5 11 right now and just seeing like six three dudes like towering over me and just knowing that like in this like pit we're equal like there's not really a lot of limits there so it does in a way kind of make you feel like you have to i guess be bigger that well that's sense. no no totally totally that's that's one thing that i have always marveled at being in the pit, going, going in the pit that, um, like to a lot of people that don't know anything about this scene to a, a lot of people that know nothing about it. They're like, Oh, it's violent. It's this and that. Aren't you going to get hurt? And not realizing that you're probably safer there than in, <laughs> than crossing the street. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's never really about, like, oh, I'm going into the pit to hurt people. Like, there are people who do that, but obviously they're not, like, they're not down with a lot of people. So, it's always, like, like if you see someone fall down, there's, like, always a crowd of people there to pick them up. So, it's always it is about just, I guess, having fun. And the music, of course. What would you like to happen for Milltown? Like, like you know, you're, you're, you're reorganizing things. You're wiping mm -hmm. stuff, except you're not going to wipe FV Slim. Or you could. Maybe you do a subsidiary. Because, dude, I'm telling you, I got a 30-minute song I'm going to be sending you. And I've been recording some 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 other stuff I'll tell you about in, in mm -hmm. I'll tell you about when I when I stop the interview. But like what what would you like to see happen? Um I think I'll know that I'll be like that I'm happy with it when someone is, I guess, bragging to someone else, like, oh, I'm on this label. Right. And, like, they're happy about it, and they're, like, proud to show that off. I think at that point I'll be, like, happy with what I've done. 